Hi everyone, and today I'm going to teach you how to play the Star Wars customizable card game. If you've seen other videos on my channel, you would have seen videos about the Star Wars customizable card game. This started to come out in 1995. It ran to about 2000, 2001, before um, the Cypher who made it lost the license. Um, so I'm going to do a quick overview and show you how to play. Obviously this video is not going to show you every single rule. Uh, the rules are pretty expansive for the, uh, all the different sets they released. They released um, expansion sets and a whole sheet of new rules every time. So um, I'm going to cover the basics really. If you need to go into more detail about the separate expansions, you can do. Um, the rule supplements are still online, I'll link those down below for you. You can still pick up the Star Wars CCG on places like eBay. Um, some sellers sell complete sets, some sell just bulk lots of cards. Um, some of them are pretty reasonable, some of them aren't. You um, just have to shop around really. Uh, but if you can get hold of it, um, this game is amazing. So to play, both players will need a deck. So one player is the light side and one player is the dark side. The general amount of cards for a deck is 60 cards. When I used to play the game with my friends, um, we used to do card decks of about 80 cards, only because we wanted longer games. But as long as you've each got your own um, deck and they both had the same amount of cards, that's no problem. So obviously you can pull the cards from all the different sets available. There's plenty of them, thousands of cards. Obviously you can make strategies. Um, it's a big good idea if you're um, playing with someone that you can get in contact with before you play. Um, just check what sort of planets they'll be um, playing. Only because you don't want to make a whole deck strategize around destroying the Death Star if your opponent's not even playing the Death Star, for example. Um, but uh, the main planets to start off with, if you haven't played before, I would pick Tatooine, because um, there's plenty of cards for Tatooine, from, especially from the earlier sets. Um, for the, de the uh, dark side, um, Tatooine again, uh, Death Star um, would be a good one, because it starts off quite early, so you can have like docking bays and stuff. So there's different card types. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, obviously you have characters, which are your uh, the people who are on screen basically. Then you have um, the sites, which belong to the planets. Um, you deploy those and your characters play at the sites. You have things like devices, which deploy on your characters to help them out. You have cards like interrupt cards, which have temporary effects um, and effects which usually have longer lasting effects on the game. Then you have obviously starships and you also have vehicles which go on planets. There are a few other card types as well. Um, for example, there are things called objectives, um, epic events, um, I'll see if I can find some in here. Um, they're generally for more experienced players. For example, this is a, an objective, I think. If I remember correctly, this is an objective. So you deploy it, do the conditions, flip it over, and there's lasting effects on the game. Epic events are things that have more long-lasting effects and they're very complicated to, to um, put into place. For example, they are things like destroying the Death Star. So that's an example of an epic event. Um, so you have to have several cards in play. It's very hard to achieve in a game environment unless your whole deck is specifically surrounding this event, which is why I say you need to uh, check with your opponent. <laughs> There's no point putting a whole deck together, destroying a Death Star, if your opponent's not even playing the Death Star. So let's dive straight in and I'll show you quickly how to play the game. 
of the Star Wars CCG. So, first things first, each player needs to take their deck and find a starting location. Each location has lightsaber icons on, blue for the light side, red for the dark side. The um, main thing you need to do is activate force. Now this is your life force, your whole deck is your life force. One card is one unit of life, life force. So you want to get locations that activate force. So the more light, lightsaber icons the better because on character cards you'll see a deploy cost in this white box. And if you, the more force you have to activate in a turn means the more cards you can play and other actions you can take. So I'm going to choose this card for my starting location for the light side which is the Tatooine Lars Moisture Farm. That's a more, quite a popular one when I used to play, I always used to have that, because it's got two light side icons and one dark side. Then for the Imperials, I'm going to choose that one, Tatooine Jabba's Palace. This isn't any strategy involved in this, it's just to show you how to play the game. So you want to thoroughly shuffle your cards. As you can see, I'm using plastic sleeves on all my cards. This uh, not only helps the protection of the cards, but also it makes shuffling a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> so once the starting locations have been decided and played, you want to draw your hand for your cards. So each player draws eight cards. That's five, six, seven, eight. And eight again for the light side. Three, four, seven, eight. So this is your hand. So hopefully, if things worked out correctly and you shuffled them well, you'll have a nice mix of cards, which the light side do. And then the dark side. It's quite character, <laughs> character heavy in that. But characters are good because you can obviously battle, etc. and do lots more actions. So, the dark side always goes first. There they'll see the attacker, the light side will never attack first. So the dark side player always goes first. So, the first phase, if you can see these, these are the phases. First phase is the activate force phase. So you activate force from your reserve deck, which is the deck here, to your force pile. So. To do that, what we do is we add up the number of dark side lightsaber icons, so the red slashes on there. So we have one, two, three, and you always activate an extra one for yourself. So one, two, three, four. The next phase is the control phase. This is a phase you um, can initiate a thing called a force drain in. So, you, you, it says here, you may initiate a force drain at each location you control. Unfortunately, because it's the first turn, we don't control any locations. Controlling a location is if you have a character at a location that isn't, um, isn't opposed by any other um, opponent's character that has ability. Um, obviously you can see on here, ability one. Droids do not have ability. Ability is basically the ability to use the force. So the next phase is the deploy phase. You may deploy cards from your hand to the table. So we can actually do something in this phase. We have four cards we can use. As I said earlier, the deploy cost is the white box on characters. You also have to um, be aware of any game text. Um, some characters um, let you only deploy at certain planets, so you have to be careful. 
Um, so there's no restrictions on any of these characters. Obviously, this is the time where you can think how cinematic you want to go with. For example, um, I could play Dr. Eva San on Tatooine right now, which is more to do with the films than putting Captain Peart at Jabba's Palace because that doesn't happen in movies. But it's entirely up to you what you, how you want to play. Obviously, the uh, priority is to win the game, so whichever one you think is going to help. Um, I'm going to go on qual quantity rather than quality. So I'm going to deploy size new tools, which is deploy cost of one, the stormtrooper deploy cost of one, and Dr. Eva San, which is a deploy cost of two. So I am going to deploy those now. So for each for each um, character you deploy, you obviously use the force, which is their deploy cost. So one force for size new tools. I'm going to put that. At Jabba's Palace. One force again for the Stormtrooper and now the Stormtrooper I'm going to put at Tatooine Lars Moisture Farm and then Dr. Eva San which is a deploy cost of two and I'm going to put him with size noodles. That's the deploy phase. Let's have a look see if there's anything else I want to do. I'm going to deploy the system location for Endor there's no Endor sites obviously on table at the moment, but it will help me out activating more force. So I'm going to do that. Now you separate the planets out with a little space. Um, obviously you don't want Endor right next to Tatooine, like that, because that's stupid, because you'll get confused. <laughs> so Endor's going to go up there. And that's my turn. Now if um, next phase is the battle phase, I can't do that at the moment because I don't have any people to battle. Move phase, well, I've just deployed these people, so I want them to stay where they are. And then we have the draw phase. Now, the draw phase, any other cards left in your force pile here, you can draw into hand. But I've used them all because I'm greedy. So I'm <laughs> going to, last thing you do is you recirculate your force back into your reserve deck. So you put your used cards underneath. And then that's your turn. So, then we carry on with the next turn. So the light side's first turn, which helps me out because they deployed Endor. <laughs> so there's two fours here. So there's two, three, four, five, and one for myself, which is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've activated that force. Next phase, again, is the control phase, which I don't have any people on the table, so I can't control. Next phase is the deploy phase. Now let's see what the light side have. Now we have a site which is free to deploy, so I can deploy that to the Endor system. Let's just move that there. Okay. Then what should we have? Now, if I don't play any characters here, what's going to happen next turn is the control phase, the Imperials dark side player will control both these sites. When they do that, they force drain, which means that the um, number of lightsaber icons on the light side, I will have to lose cards, and I don't really want to lose cards because the object of the game is to deplete your other player's life force. So as soon as all these cards are discarded, that player loses. So I really need to get some characters down here pretty fast. I've got quite high deploy cost characters here, so it's going to be quite difficult. What I'm going to do is play an interrupt. Now interrupts can play any time during the game, even on the opponent's turn. Um, and this interrupt is blue milk. It is a used or lost interrupt. Used interrupts mean they go in the used pile once you've played them. Lost interrupts mean they get discarded into your lost pile. So the used ones will get recirculated back into your deck, which is a very good mechanic. Usually the used options aren't as good as the lost options. But on this 
one. The used one is select a player to activate one force. So I'm going to play interrupt, blue milk, activate one force. And that's a used interrupt, so it goes into my used pile there. So now I have seven cards at my disposal. I'm going to play this character, Admiral Akbar. He's got a deploy cost of four. He deploys minus two to home one, which is his starship in Return of the Jedi. But at the moment, I just want him as a character because that's my situation. Um, so he's a pilot. Um, he doesn't have any other abilities I use at the moment. But I need his high power and high ability. So I'm going to deploy him to Lars Moisture Farm for four force. So one, two, three, and four. I now have three cards left. And I'm going to deploy Han Solo with Admiral Akbar for three fourths. One, two, and three. So again, no, um, I could battle here if I wanted to, but I don't have enough force because to initiate a battle, you have to use one force and I don't have that. Um, so I'm going to skip battle phase, move phase. I'm not going to do again because I haven't got any cards. Um, and draw phase, I can't draw anything. So that's the end of my light side turn. So they used cards get recycled and then we have activate force again. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven for myself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what have we got left? More characters. But first, before we do anything, we have a control phase to do. And control phase is going to affect this site here because there is no opposition for these characters. So that's what you call controlling a site. Um, so there's no other modifiers on the location. So to initiate the force drain, I'm going to say force drain here, which means I have to lose one force. I'll just double check there's no game text. No. So I'm going to have to lose one force on the light side here. So to lose force, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, you can lose, as I said before, one unit of life force is one card. So you can either lose a card from your hand or you can lose a card from the top of the deck. Obviously, just doing the top of the deck is quite risky because you could discard a really important card that you really want. At the moment, I want to keep all these cards, so I'm going to have to risk it and lose one force from the top, which is C-3PO. I'm not too bothered about that. So that's the control phase done. Then we have a deploy phase. Now I've got, if I remember correctly, seven cards at my disposal, and I'm going to deploy some more characters because I feel a battle might be coming on. So I am going to deploy these two. Three deploy each, so that's six. One, two, three for Captain Piet. And one, two, three for Moff Gerald. So the next phase is battle. Now to initiate a battle, you have to use one force. And there are several stages of a battle. There is the weapon segment, power segment, and the damage segment. Now, as I showed you earlier, there are weapon cards available. Weapons, you fire at your opponent's characters in order to try and hit them, which means they get discarded at the end of the battle. Um, in this battle, I don't have any weapons, so we're going to skip that phase, but I will show you that later. Um, power segment. So what we need to do is determine how much power we each have. But before we do that, we have to add up the ability of our characters. Han Solo has three. Admiral Akbar has three. What you're looking for is a total of four or more. 
This means you can draw something called a battle destiny. Battle destiny gets drawn from the top of the reserve deck and you use this number in the top corner as your battle destiny number. So same again, on this side we have three, six, seven ability, which means we can draw one battle destiny. Now there's difficult things that start happening when you have lots of characters on table, are things in game text. If you're not familiar with all the cards, you start to lose track of what game text is what. You might miss, forget to do something, forget to add power to something. It gets very complicated. So you need to spend time with your cards and getting to know what abilities and game text they have. And um, so you're more quicker doing all the battles and stuff. Um, but I mean, I haven't played this game for years, so <laughs> I'm going to have to check my cards. So. Again, I can draw Battle Destiny for the um, Imperials. Now this is good because I can show you this. Site cards and system cards, locations they're called. They don't have any destiny number, which means it's a destiny of zero. That is really annoying <laughs> um, for the Imperial side because that's a zero. So any used Battle Destiny just gets put into the used pile. So now we do a total of the power at this location. So I'll do the light side first. Avalabra has three, Han Solo has three, so that's six. You then add up the battle destiny, which is another three, which makes a total of nine. The Imperials, we have three, four, five, and six. So Unfortunately, the Imperials have lost that battle. You then have to do damage segment, which contains two things, attrition and um, loss of force for the damage. I think it's battle damage, they call it. Um, so the total is nine and six, so we'll do the attrition first. The Imperials have to lose a character to satisfy the three. So that can, as long as you discard three from the forfeit values, which is the black number at the bottom, then that satisfies the attrition. So I don't really want to lose two characters. Um, so I'm just going to use Captain Piet, forfeit of four, and he gets lost. So he gets put into the lost pile here, which leaves the Stormtrooper and Moff Gerald. So that's done. Then we have to satisfy battle damage. So the total of nine, total of six, is a difference of three, which means the Imperials have to lose three units of life force. This can be satisfied by, again, forfeiting characters that were included in the battle, or using one card as one unit of life force, so three cards. I'm going to use keep the characters and you lose force. I'm going to lose that card, so that's one. I know that card is a location that I don't want, so I'm going to use that, two, and that one, three. So it's like it can come from any of your, um, what they call it, life force piles, which leads my hand, which is that one. So that battle is all done and the Imperials are losing. <laughs> you have a move phase. I don't have any more cards. To move you use one force for each character so I can't do that. I don't really want to move any at the moment. Um, and then we have the draw phase. Again I don't have any cards left which is a bit of a pain. So then we have the use deck going underneath the reserve deck. Now I'm going to play and same again for the light side, that goes under there. End of every turn, the life force gets recycled. So we have two, four, five, six, seven, and eight makes my, you, uh, the force pile. So we have four, five, six, seven, and eight. So eight cards is very good. Um, I need to make sure I draw some cards at the end of this turn though. 
So I'm going to deploy Shmi for two force. And I'm going to concentrate on Lars Moisture Farm. So that's Shmi. Now this is something I haven't shown you yet. Um, a deploy restriction. So a Jawa here, Kalit, deploys only on Tatooine. So that means you can only deploy Kalit at a Tatooine site. You can place him here on Endor, for example. Um, but he can move elsewhere. So I'll show you later how docking bays work. So I'm going to deploy Kalit again to Lars Moisture Farm, which is three force. So that leaves me three force in my force pile. Now I could deploy that possibly or another character, but I want to draw some cards and I also want to initiate a battle because the Imperials are going down, I'm telling you now. So I'm going to initiate battle using one force and total up the ability at the site, three and four, so the Imperials can draw battle destiny. And in this battle, it is a three, so that helps them out. Again, I've got more than four ability here, so I'll draw battle destiny and the same thing happens as with the Imperials. I draw a site or a system location. That's a zero, so that's completely useless for me. So now it's time to add up the power. So we do the light side first again. Shmi has power one. Han has four. Uh, three makes four. Three makes seven, eight, nine all together. Just put that there. Then on the imperial side, we have Moff Gerald, which is three and four with the stormtrooper, plus the battle destiny, so that's seven. So what do we have here? Six, nine, nine and seven. So again, the Imperials have lost, but they have something on their side because they have a battle destiny, which is a three. So I have to lose attrition of at least three from this site. I'm going to choose the Jawa, which is a forfeit of three. So Kalit gets lost to satisfy the three attrition. That goes in the use pile. Imperials have a difference of two because we had nine here and seven here. So that's two battle damage. I'm going to discard this. Actually, no, actually I might keep that because it's a character. So what was that card? That's the character. So I'm going to lose that one because it's a bit less useful, I think. So one, two. So two cards satisfies the two battle damage. Then we have the move phase. I'm not going to move any of my characters because it would be spread too thin otherwise. So I'm going to draw cards and I'm going to draw both two cards here. Oh, we have Baru Lars and Luke Skywalker. Two brilliant cards. I'll quickly show you this. On the last moisture farm, Owen Lars, Bru Lars and Luke deploy minus one. Which is why, I mean, this is, this is where strategy comes in. You have things like, this is why, this is one of the decks I used to always play. I must mention now that me and my friends, we didn't, we weren't going to hardcore strategies. We just used to like to have fun playing games. My favourite characters are people like Baru Lars and Luke, so I would always play Lars Moisture Farm and make sure I had these cards in my deck. So, um, as I said, Owen Lars, Baru Lars and Luke deployed minus one here, so strategy is really good. Baru deploys for free, Luke will deploy for only two, but that'll be on a subsequent turn. So, that's the end of my light side turn. And I'm, actually, I'm gonna play one more round because it's getting good and I've got into it. <laughs> so what have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is gonna be a very quick turn for me. I'm gonna force drain here 
So I lose one card, I'm going to lose a card from my reserve deck, which is an Ewok, which doesn't matter because nothing's going on in Endor at the moment. Then we have the deploy phase. I'm going to deploy Commander Nemet because I need all the help I can get for two force. Then I'm not going to do anything else because I'm going to get blown to smithereens again, I think, if I do any battling here. So all I'm going to do is draw my entire force pile as my draw phase at the end. So that gives me a lot more stuff to go on. For example, there's a super laser, I can get rid of that. I don't want that if I get battle damage again. Emperor Palpatine, um, he's not, he's okay, but I could put him on the end door possibly because um, he, he has a deployment restriction. He never deploys to a site that the opponent occupies. So if the opponent has any characters, he can't deploy there. I might put him on Endor. Then we have a couple of Tatooine based cards, which is going to help me out, especially this power of five in battles. So that's the Imperial's turn. And then we have a light side turn. And then I will show you some other strategies because I could play this for hours. <laughs> So we have two, four, five, six, seven, and one for myself is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now comes the fun bit, my <laughs> Lars Moisture Farm strategy. We have Brew Lars. She deploys free there. Then I have Luke. He deploys for two because he's minus one at the last moisture farm. So, deploying a loop for two force. I'm going to deploy Max Rebo. Yeah. He is deployed three. I could also deploy this if I want, but I want some spare cards. So I've got three left. So next phase is the battle phase and I think I might initiate a battle here because I've got a huge army <laughs> of Tatooine people and they're going to obliterate the Imperials. So I'm going to initiate one force here and initiate the battle. I've got plenty of ability here, I'm not going to bother adding it up because I've, Luke himself can draw Battle Destiny on his own because he has ability 4. My Destiny number for this battle through the light side is a three. Again, I have four here, I know. So this one is destiny of three. So time to add up the power. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, plus three is fifteen. 15 is a huge number, which I'm very happy about because the Imperials are going to go down. We have 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's a difference of 7. So the Imperials are going to have to lose 3 attrition for the Battle Destiny and 7 force. The light side is going to have to lose 3 forfeit from here for attrition. So, three, we'll do the light sides first. So, a three, uh, doo -doo -doo. I'm going to lose Shmi Skywalker. She has a forfeit of five. So, that's done. Then we have to lose three from the Imperial side, uh, which is going to be Commander Nemet because he's got a three. Then the Imperials have to lose seven force, which is quite a high number. Now, the decision comes whether you want to keep your characters here or whether you just want to wipe, wipe them out. What have we got in my hand? That's not very useful because if I get rid of all my characters here, I haven't got many to replace them with. So I'm going to lose seven cards. I'm going to lose Hmm. Really, I don't know if I want to deploy him. I'm going to lose him. So one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven. So there we go. That's the light side ten. And I'm going to draw the remaining cards here. So I'm not going to show you any more turns because the game carries on like that until one player loses all their cards and then they're going to lose. Judging on the initial battles etc, I'm thinking the Imperials are going to lose quite a large battle. <laughs> they're not going to survive for very much longer. So I've just mocked up this play environment, obviously this could be the board after a few more turns. Um, what we haven't come across yet is docking bays. Now docking bays are site cards that you can use to move to other planets. So up here, you can't quite see it, but I have an Endor docking bay in play. So if I wanted to, in my move phase, for one force, I can move these characters from the docking bay here to a docking bay at another planet site. So if I want, I can move Owen and Baru and Luke Skywalker onto Endor, which <laughs> obviously isn't very cinematic, but in this environment it can happen. Again, I haven't explained about moving because I haven't moved. Um, basically, one action per turn in the move phase so, for example, if I had some force here and I wanted to move characters, you can use one force for each character you want to move and you can move them to an adjacent site. So, for example, you can go here or he can go here. And you won't be able to do any other moving this turn. So, for example, I couldn't move Abel Akbar here and then shuttle him to Endor. He would have to do one of those a turn. Same again, if, for example, Luke had shuttled from Endor to Tatooine, he couldn't then move again in the same turn to the next adjacent site. It's only one thing per turn for moving. So during the deploy phase, there's a couple of things that I haven't showed you yet. Uh, these involve converting. So, converting sites. Each, well, the majority of site and system cards have two versions, one light side and one dark side. So for example, on the table at the moment is the dark side version of Endor. During the deploy phase, you deploy for the normal cost, so free for sites um, or the deploy cost for other cards. Um, so I'm going to deploy the light side version of Endor. So you convert a location just by putting it on top. This can affect the force icons on the cards. It also affects the game text on the cards. So, and obviously they can be changed back again if for any reason you like dark side has another version of Endor, you can put that on top again. You can also um, upgrade unique cards that are on the table. If you look on this card, Princess Leia, she has a dot next to her name. This indicates that she is a unique character, so there's only one of her in the entire universe. You can, for example, have three princess layers running around. Majority of named characters, like Brew, Owen Lars, etc., they have a unique icon as well. Then you get the generic ones like Tusken Raiders, which don't have names, for example, so they're more widespread, same as Stormtroopers. You can have as many of them you like on those on the table at once. So, they're called Personas. So we have Persona of Leia Organa, Princess Leia. She's on the table already. Um, so, to convert a character, upgrade them basically, they have to have at least the same power and same ability. So, as long as they're not lower, for example, if I had this Princess Leia on table, I couldn't replace her with an earlier version because she's got lower values. But this one's on table at the moment. She has power three, ability three. I want to change her for her upgraded. She's suddenly decided that she can, well not decided, <laughs> she's suddenly realized that she can sense the force, so she's gone up in ability. Um, which is again, 
equal to the movies. They progress through the movies, so they get stronger through the game. To replace, or well, it's for free, you don't have to deploy them for the deploy cost um, for characters, I've just remembered that. Um, you replace character on table with the one in your hand. So Princess Leia had Leia's supporting rifle deployed on her on the table already. That transfers to her as long as there's no restrictions. And I've just realised there actually is a restriction on this character which uh, is deploys only to Hoth or Cloud City. Therefore, I cannot replace the layer on table with this one. I could if it, she was on Hearth or Cloud City, but I can't because she's on Tatooine. But I do have another layer in my hand. Again, three and four, so she's higher than this one, and this one doesn't have any um, restrictions. So you can replace the one on table for the one in your hand. Now, any, obviously I just said, any devices or weapons, as long as there's no restrictions, uh, get transferred as well. Obviously, weapons, I um, mentioned this before, weapons deploy on warriors. And there we go. Now, I haven't shown you how to fire weapons in a battle yet, so I'm going to do that in this battle. So I'm going to pretend this game's going on and I'm going to initiate a battle at this site. Now, so the battle phases, we have the weapon segment. So I have got a weapon in this one. So we'll just read the game text. Um, may target for free. So usually the target cost is on the card. So you, sometimes you would have to use force. Draw destiny. So I'm going to, you have to target a character. Now, when you draw destiny, same as battle destiny, top of your reserve deck, you re you reveal a number. As long as that one number is minus one greater than the ability of the character you're targeting, they will be hit. So I want to find quite a low ability character because this weapon isn't brilliant. I'm going to target a Tuscan Raider because these two Tuscan Raiders that are on table together they will help each other. So I'm going to destroy one of those. So target for free, so I don't have to use any more force. Destiny is a four, which means destiny minus one is a three, which is greater than the ability, so that one is hit. To hit a character, you turn it sideways, and that card has to be um, discarded at the end of the battle. So I've got ability four here and ability over four here. So we each draw Battle Destiny, so two for the light side and a one for the dark side. So let's add up the power. So we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve for the light side. Then we have the Tuscan Raiders ability which is total power of a group of Tuscan Raiders depends on how many present. One is a total power of four over one. Uh, two equals three. Three equals six, four equals ten. Limit four at one side. So there's two Tuscan Raiders this side, so they have a total power of three. Plus three is six, seven, and eight. So the Imperials have lost by four, four force. So attrition, two, that only has a forfeit of one, so I'm going to, it's hit as well, so that has to be discarded. So I'm going to do one and one is two, so I discard those two to satisfy that attrition. Then on the other side is a one. Now, something else I haven't shown you is immunity to attrition. So this helps quite a lot of the main characters. Um, that helps them out. Um, just so if you have a, a situation like this of one, you don't get killed off. 
because they wouldn't in reality. So Leia has immunity to attrition less than five if with Luke, Han or Jabba. She's with Han Solo here. So she is immune to attrition less than five. So she cannot be discarded because the destiny is less than five. So I am going to have to lose one of these. I'm going to lose Max Rebo because he's the least valuable. Then for battle damage, the opponent Imperial's lost by four, so they have to lose four cards. So I'm going to lose those three and that one, for example. Obviously, I would probably wouldn't lose Boba Fett in the game, but <laughs> then obviously. Um, the game carries on like that. Um, obviously, again, let's say you can make it as cinematic as you want or as non-cinematic as you want. So, you, for example, you could deploy a load of Ewoks on Endor and then transfer them through the docking bay to Tatooine and have Ewoks running around Tatooine. Again, like in my hand here, I've got Admwazel on an at that was on Hoth. You could deploy them to Lars Moisture Farm and have them blow up Lars Moisture Farm. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can't actually do that, but you know what I mean. An eighty eighty walking around on Tatooine, etc. So yeah, that's the game basically. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Um, there probably is. There's so many rules. Every expansion had a sheet full of rules, which is a complete detriment to the game because new players coming in late in the game would not be able to pick it up properly. Obviously, if, you're, if you've never played this game, I would recommend just starting out with Premiere cards or Premiere New Hope. I wouldn't advance onto Hoth um, until you've played a few games, purely because you need to concentrate on one or two planets. So I would concentrate on Tatooine and the Death Star, for example, if you're playing Premiere or New Hope. I'll just have a look through my decks to see if there's any other um, cards I haven't explained quickly. Um, so the later expansions, there's obviously dual cards here, Owen and Baru. Um, if you add a sand crawler on table, so that's the sand crawler. So for example, if I had that on Jabba's Palace there, there's vehicle sites so the vehicles are big enough to warrant having a separate site for them these go off to one side they don't go on the um, space line here um, the imperials have um, star destroyer sites um, executor star destroyer sites as well um, there's later expansions included episode one characters so if you want, I don't, I mean, I've, I was stopping playing when these uh, came out. I don't think there's any restrictions on how you play episode one cards. So for example, it'd be pretty stupid and ridiculous, but you could play Padme there with Luke. So Luke can battle with his own mother, but her own mother's not old enough to have him. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but obviously... I would probably steer clear of things like that. Um, so let's have a look, see if there's any other strategies here. There's an example of a device you could put on table on a droid. Um, there's the Falcon. There's um, expanded universe characters. So for example, Dash Rendar, he was in Shadows of the Empire. So yeah, that's the Light side, I can't see anything that I haven't mentioned there. Dark side, let's have a quick look. Uh, yeah, the starships actually, I haven't mentioned starships because we never got that far. So for example, Tatooine had a system, you deploy starships. Now most of the basic starships have permanent pilots, so they can be played straight away onto the system locations. If they don't have this pilot icon, um, they have to be deployed at a docking bay, 
then that pilot like Luke here gets on the ship and then you can fly it up to the system and then battle the same as you battle at sites you battle at systems force drain at systems exactly the same so that is my quick overview look there's Darth Vader he didn't make an appearance so that was my quick overview of the Star Wars customizable car game I've really enjoyed making this video I want to thank Daiku, Daiki Ochoa, I think your name was. I'm sorry if I said that name wrong, but um, he su uh, suggested I do this video. Um, I'm really happy that I've had the time this week to make it um, because I love this game. It's my favorite customizable card game. Um, in the future, um, if I get the time, um, I will do other how to play uh, videos for the Star Trek customizable card game. There's obviously a Doctor Who one as well. Um, but yeah, it's, this video has been really fun to make. I've really enjoyed it. So um, it's lovely getting the cards out and having them being played for once. Um, so yes, thank you for watching my video. Please uh, comment down below uh, any comments you've got on the video. Um, if I did anything wrong, I really apologise. I've not played this game in many, many years. Um, I hope I've remembered everything correctly and told you enough for you to at least uh, see an overview of the game, whether you want to play it and stuff. And please subscribe to my channel to see my future videos. Take care everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!